In the previous lecture, we discussed the average kinetic theory of gases. And we said that this is an important theory because it essentially helps us describe the way that our ideal and real gases behave. Now, in this lecture, we're going to essentially use the kinetic molecular theory of gases to help us develop a relationship between the average translational kinetic energy of the gas molecules and the temperature of our gaseous system. So, according to the kinetic molecular theory of gases, the average translational kinetic energy of the ideal gas molecules in random and arbitrary motion is directly proportional to the temperature. So that basically means if we increase the temperature of our entire gaseous system, well that means that the average kinetic, average translational kinetic energy of the gas molecules will also increase. So let us actually derive this equation, this relationship in equation form. Let's begin with the following container. Let's suppose we have many different types of molecules, gas molecules, inside our container moving back and forth. Let's suppose that the area of this face of our container is given by A and let's suppose that the length of this edge is given by S. So previously, in the previous lecture, we essentially said that the pressure acting on any wall of the container is created by the collisions of the molecules between the wall of that container and the molecules themselves. So in order to derive an equation for the pressure due to the molecules, we first have to calculate the force that is created by those molecules because pressure is equal to force divided by area. So let's begin with a single molecule. Let's suppose we have a single molecule shown in green that is traveling back and forth along the x-axis between wall number one found on this side and wall number number two found on this side. The area of these two walls is exactly the same. And let's suppose we want to determine what the pressure is that's acting on this wall. So, basically our molecule moves back and forth and it keeps on hitting our wall at the same exact location. Now let's suppose that the velocity of our object, our molecule, when it's traveling in this direction is given by negative Vx. And when it bounces off the wall because the collision is completely elastic, that means the velocity is conserved so it travels in this direction with a velocity positive Vx. So going this way, the velocity is negative and when it bounces off, the velocity is positive Vx. So if we want to derive the force equation, we have to use Newton's second law of motion, which states that the average force acting on an object, in this case the wall, is equal to the change in momentum per some given time, so the rate of change of momentum, where momentum is mass times velocity. So mass of our particle, mass of our molecule, multiplied by the change in velocity of that molecule during our collision, divided by the change in time that it takes to make that collision. So, let's find the change in momentum for a single collision for this single molecule. So the mass is equal to the change in velocity. Now what exactly is the change in velocity during our collision? Well the change in velocity is initially right before it collides the velocity is negative Vx and right after it collides the velocity is positive Vx. So that means the final velocity minus the initial velocity is m times vx minus negative vx. So negative and negative, well this becomes a positive and that means vx plus vx is 2vx so m times change in v is equal to 2 times m times vx. 
This is our change in momentum of our molecule during a single collision. But each molecule makes many collisions on the same wall. So the molecule moves back and forth, back and forth, it bounces off wall 1, travels to wall 2, bounces off wall 2, and returns to wall 1. And this continues until something stops that molecule. Now, suppose that each collision is separated by a time delta t. So change in t represents the time that it takes for a single collision to take place. That means if we want to find uh, the distance that our object travels when it reaches wall 1 and then returns back to wall 1, we have to use the following equation. We take the velocity of our object, of our molecule, and multiply it by the time it takes it to travel this entire distance. So Vx, the velocity of that object, multiplied by the change in time, the time be between any two collisions. So Vx multiplied by delta t is equal to, well, 1s plus 1s gives us 2s. So if we represent change in delta by itself, we'll see that change in delta is equal to the distance 2s divided by vx. So we simply rearrange this equation. So now let's actually try to determine the average force that is acting on the wall due to our collision due to a single molecule. So, because the delta T is extremely small, that means many collisions are made every single second. Thus, the average force that one molecule creates on the wall is equal to the change in the momentum of that molecule during the collision uh, divided by the time that it takes to make that collision. So, this comes from the second law of motion. Second, Newton's second law of motion. So, the force average is equal to change in momentum divided by change in time, and that equals to, well, this entire equation, m times delta v divided by change in t. Now, we know that m multiplied by delta v is equal to 2 times m multiplied by vx. So, we replace this with this equation, and we get 2 mv x and delta t, the time it takes for one collision to take place, is given by 2s divided by vx. So 2s divided by vx. Notice the 2s will cancel, the vx will go to the top, and we have m times vx squared divided by s. So the force that is acting on the wall due to our collision of a single molecule is given by mvx squared divided by s, where vx is the velocity of that molecule along the x-axis, s is the distance between the two walls, and m is the mass of that single molecule. Now, what about the average force acting on the wall due to all the molecules inside our container? Well, to find that force, we simply sum up all the vector forces due to all the molecules hitting that wall. So we have the force average due to our molecules is equal to ms multiplied by, and we simply sum up all these different velocities squared. So vx1 is the velocity of molecule 1, vx2 is the velocity of molecule 2, and all the way up to capital N, where capital N is simply the last molecule. So N is the number of total molecules we have that are hitting that particular wall. So notice the mass uh, of each molecule is the same, and the distance each molecule travels from wall number 1 to wall number 2 is exactly the same. Now, generally speaking, we know that the average velocity of each molecule is equal to, well, we simply take 
the sum of all these velocities and divide that by the total number that we are summing. So this is the average value of the square of the x component velocity of all the different molecules in our container. So vx squared with the bar symbol on top simply means it's the average square of our velocity. So notice if we bring this n to the left side we see that vx1 squared plus vx2 squared plus dot 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 plus vx n squared is equal to n multiplied by vx squared the average. So we take this and we notice that this can be replaced with this. So force is equal to m times s multiplied by capital N the number of molecules in our container multiplied by the square of the average velocity acting along the x-axis. So we basically have this equation m times n times v squared uh, average divided by s the distance that each molecule travels. Now we know from the Pythagorean theorem that vx average squared plus vy average squared plus vz average squared is equal to v average squared. Now because we are dealing with the kinetic molecular theory of gas and because the molecules move in arbitrary motion in arbitrary direction that implies that it doesn't matter what direction we choose vx average squared squared is equal to vy average squared is equal to vx average squared. So that means we can take this, these two quantities and replace them with vx average squared. So that means v average squared is equal to three times vx average squared. So we simply replace these with vx squared. So that means if we go back to this equation, if we rearrange this equation, we see that vx average squared is equal to v average squared divided by three. So we plug that into vx average squared. And we see that the force due to all the molecules acting on that wall is equal to m divided by s multiplied by n multiplied by the average velocity squared divided by 3. Now, this is the force. To find the pressure, we simply take the force and divide it by the area of that wall. So that means that the pressure is equal to force divided by area. So we take this quantity and divide it by area and we get the following result. The mass times the number of molecules times the square of the average velocity divided by our area times the length of the side, S, multiplied by 3. Now, A times S is simply the volume of that entire container. So we replace A, S with volume. Now, notice we have pressure is equal to this quantity. Let's multiply both sides by volume. So we get pressure times volume is equal equal to, well notice the volume will appear on the top and the bottom so we can cancel that volume out. And also let's take this side and multiply top and bottom by a factor of 2. So we get the following result. Pressure times volume is equal to 2 divided by 3 and multiplied by 1 half multiplied by mass, multiplied by the average velocity squared. Notice that this quantity is our average translational kinetic energy of the molecule. So this is our kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy. Now, let's recall what the ideal gas law tells us. According to the ideal gas law, the pressure times the volume is equal to the product of the Boltzmann constant, the number of molecules, and, and the temperature. So that means that because PV is equal to this, and PV is equal to this, we can equate this side to this side. Notice the ends will appear on both sides. So we can cross out the ends. And if we solve for the average translational kinetic energy, we see that 3 divided by 2 K times T, where T is the temperature and K is the Boltzmann constant, is equal to 1 half M 
times the square of the average velocity. So this means that if we increase the temperature, we increase the average translational kinetic energy of our gases. So we were able to derive an equation that gives us the average translational kinetic energy using the kinetic molecular theory of gases. And we see that the average kinetic energy is dependent on the temperature. If you increase the temperature, each molecule on average will have a greater amount of kinetic energy.